Hello, uh, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where in the world you're joining us from. Uh, thank you for taking the time to stop on by for this YouTube live session with the University of South Wales, all about student life, undergraduate, postgraduate, and everything in between. Uh, my name's Tom. I'm uh, part of the University of South Wales. Wales International Office. Uh, I'm joined here by Vishnu, who will now introduce himself. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vishnu. I'm currently doing my master's uh, at USW. I've just finished my undergraduate, got straight into master's. Um, and yeah, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself as the session goes along. Excellent stuff. Yeah, so uh, I'm sure most of you are already aware about what the session is going to be about. Some of you might have already sent us through some questions that you are eager to have answered as well. So for the next hour or so, we'll be answering questions that you've uh, submitted to us. If you have any other questions that you are eager for answers to, then feel free to drop them into the comments section as well. And we'll do our best to answer them as we go along. And um, just before we jump on into these questions, um, I just want to really introduce where we are, where we're filming from at the moment. So right now we are at one of uh, the University of South Wales's uh, facilities. This is our sports park just outside of our Forest campus. Uh, behind us, you can see quite a lovely uh, facility here. So this is our indoor 4G FIFA accredited full-size football pitch, if I'm yes, not mistaken. <laughs> Excellent. Do you mind telling us a little bit more about it? Um, yeah, so uh, previous to this, we had all our uh, games um, on, on our grass pitches outdoors. We had a 3G pitch outdoor as well. Uh, but yeah, since we run a lot of coaching courses, uh, it's not nice to have students getting wet in the rain. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we've had this fantastic new uh, facility that's are so good like in terms for coaching um our first team that's just had a historic season actually uh won the national uh, cup and league double really and got undefeated as well uh so uh, they train here three times a week um some games not not too often but uh, they do play games if it's bad weather outside so it's a multi-purpose pitch really uh get some international teams come and train here as well um Fantastic facility. Excellent. Brilliant. Okay. So um, what we're going to do for the next uh, hour or so is just highlight what answers to these questions you've already asked uh, and work through anything else that you have for us as well. Okay. And um, so we have a few questions that we've already received over the weekend from everybody. Um, so we'll start off with something that's a little bit broad, I suppose. Uh, and that is, well, what is the local area like? Um, in your own opinion. So it's, it's been a while since I've been a student here at the university, but Vishnu, of course, you're still a student with us. Yes, I am. <laughs> um, tell us a little bit more about the local area. Uh, well, actually, I came in from Mumbai, so it was quite a busy city environment. Uh, but yeah, Triforce is a calm, nice place to live in, uh, especially if you want to focus on studies. <laughs> it definitely <laughs> is a very, very good place to live. Um, it's easy to get around the place, bus, trains, um, things like that, that's quite quite easy to commute around. It's quite safe, I believe. I've uh, not felt like, uh, especially as an international student, you've got your uh, reservations about what the facilities, what the area is like, but it's been really safe and feel very comfortable in that's, an yeah. area like this. I suppose that's very important then, uh, obviously coming all the way over from India. Oh, yes. uh, was it the first time you visited the United Kingdom? Uh, at the time, yes, it was. Brilliant. Uh, right. so it must so, have been scary. <laughs> yes, it was like shooting in the dark. <laughs> right. So. But uh, but yes, uh, but I've never faced any problems. It's been really, really welcoming, actually. The people are really nice. Um, they've always felt, regardless, at the start, it was hard to get the accent. And I think <laughs> a couple of people in the comments have mentioned the accent as well. There we are. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> But but yeah, people are really welcoming. They don't. Uh, you you just feel comfortable That's right brilliant. off uh, as soon as you land. That's brilliant. No, no, very important. Of course, when you're studying there, you don't want the uh, added worry and pressures of obviously the environment that you're going to be in. You want that to be comfortable, to be relaxing as well. Of course. That's great. Excellent. Okay. Uh, so our next question uh, is about accommodation. Uh, simply put, well, what is the accommodation like? Um, so, so what kind of accommodation have you stayed in while you've been studying at the university? Um, so, I first came in and I went into the st student halls right. uh, at the Triforest campus. Um, obviously, there are quite a few options for you to choose within a student accommodation. The one I went for was Glamorgan Courts. Um, I thought it was, uh, it was good because uh, you come, you're staying within the university. Um, it's, it's very safe inside. 
um, I've uh, felt comfortable. Like the you've got Wi-Fi, you've got all the things that you need. Um, especially it was nice that when you first move in, you've got little things like toilet paper and stuff like that already in the room. Less uh, things so, to worry about. Yeah, yeah, a little less things to worry about. So in that sense, especially as an international student, it was fantastic to move into somewhere. It was, you just come there and you feel comfortable. Uh, I think you even had like little jam bottles for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, that was, that was nice. Um, so I lived a year uh, in student halls. Uh, I then moved uh, outside because it's, it's relatively cheaper and private accommodation. Um, it was for me. I thought was the right step um, personally because you get to see or to see the properties before you sign any contracts, which I think is important. Um, so in my year two, I so in my year one, I went around looking for properties, found the found the one I liked, um, signed the contracts, and uh, it was good. I had an opportunity to see the place, speak to the people, speak to the landlord. Um, and and yeah, went from there really, and I've been staying uh, private accommodation since. I suppose that's, that's a little bit more independence as well. So you move out of the oh, halls, yes. okay, you're, you're nearby to campus, maybe yeah. five or ten minutes away mm. there, but you've got that own dedicated space for you and your flatmates there, your own your home, really. Exactly. You get to choose your flatmates as well when you move uh, to a private accommodation, especially in year two, three, and moving forward. Um, so you're comfortable in your environment, you're comfortable in your house. Uh, it's a different environment in halls. Um, personally, I like the fact that, you know, you get to meet so many new people and especially in halls, everyone's new. So they're more than happy to make friends, um, have a social time together. Um, and yeah, it's quite buzzing in the halls. Brilliant. Excellent. I'll say great then. So uh, our next question, uh, how long is an undergraduate degree at the University of South Wales? Um, okay, so generally, uh, undergraduate degrees, uh, bachelors of arts, bachelors of science, uh, engineering, the honours degrees tend to be three years long full time. Uh, traditionally, you will start in September, usually around the middle of September, you do your enrolment and freshers yeah. week, uh, and you will study throughout the year up until the end of May to June, where you have the summer period for yourself to do whatever you will. Uh, and it's the same again for year two and for year three there. So traditionally, yeah, undergraduate degree is three years. Uh, how, how long is your master's degree? Uh, mine is two years. Um, I believe most of them at the university are one year That's courses. Correct, yeah. um, some of them have, uh, I think, uh, a dedicated period for like an internship at the end of, uh, end of year one. Uh, so yeah, they're structured a little differently masters, but undergraduates are all three years. Excellent. Okay, great. Um, next question. Can I come and visit the University of South Wales? Um, brilliant. Yes, actually, we would love to have you on campus. Yeah, we'd encourage uh, anybody who's around at the time to uh, pop on by. So we have a number of open days and open events throughout the year dedicated to show you around the facilities, to meet students, uh, speak with the tutors, see the facilities and everything else there as well. Uh, however, these might not necessarily coincide with when you might be around the area. So if you just happen to be nearby and you wanted to call in, then email us, uh, drop us uh, a direct message or something, and we'll be more than happy to show you around uh, as well. Uh, perhaps again, Vishnu, you'll be able to show the team around the rest of the sports park. Also. Oh yeah, definitely. I'd be more than happy. I think we've had a couple of applicants who are interested in sport, uh, not necessarily studying sport, but playing sport and they've come over and we've more than happy to cater uh, people who come come from elsewhere. Excellent. Okay, brilliant. So we've got uh, we've got an interesting question here um, from Deepak uh, Kumar, and he says, "Is lifestyle in Cardiff equal to London?" Okay. Um, so it's it's a very good question. Uh, so Cardiff, Cardiff. For those of you who don't know, Cardiff is the capital city of Wales. Uh, the equivalent, of course, in England is London, so two capital cities. But in terms of the lifestyle within them, I like to think are very different. Um, so even though I'm from England, I've never lived in London before. I'm from the north of England, so again, pretty far away. Uh, but I've been here in Wales for the last 10 years or so. I've spent a lot of time, obviously, in Cardiff. The major differences, if you were to ask me, is, of course, well, in Cardiff, you've got this nice big... Uh, cosmopolitan city uh, with a range of you know, international festivals, food festivals, especially oh, yeah. this time of year as well. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot going on, but just 20 minutes away, 25 minutes away, you start to get into the valleys, into the rural areas, into the countryside. Uh, we've got the Brecon Beacons National Parks. So I'm not sure if you've been up oh, there. Oh, I have. It's beautiful. 
Excellent. So yeah, for those of you who like your wildlife, your nice open spaces, a uh, bit of hiking, trekking, yeah. bit of trekking, uh, forest walks and so on, that is literally 20 minutes or so away from campus. You go in the opposite direction, you get into the city center of Cardiff itself. So depending really on what lifestyle you want from day to day, you've got the options, you've got the choice to, well, choose what you want. Excellent. <laughs> So uh, our next question, uh, how, how do I apply for scholarships? Uh, do, do you take up any scholarships when you apply to the University of South Wales? Yeah, I think uh, the, the system at the university is quite good because as an international student, you apply and um, your conditional unconditional offer will automatically state that you've got a scholarship and it just gets applied automatically. So it's very convenient. It's not a separate procedure for it, um, depending on which country you're based and your amounts might differ. but the scholarship is directly applied. That's great, yes. So we, we try and make that process uh, as easy as possible for students. We understand this uh, when you're applying, you've got a lot of things to consider, your accommodation, your flights, your visas, uh, everything, uh, making sure that you've packed everything that you need as well. So the whole process of trying to arrange these scholarships, we try and make again a little bit more streamlined for you. So so, so, so long as you are an international student, uh, you are self-funded, then the scholarships that you are eligible for automatically get applied to your application when you make it. Excellent. <laughs> so uh, can you work around your studies? So I think this is one uh, <laughs> that you'd be best suited to answer there, Vishnu. So can you can you work around your studies? Can you have part-time work while you study? Yeah, definitely, most definitely, because I, I worked all through the three years when I was uh, in my bachelor's and I'm still working uh, part-time while doing my master's. Um, you get uh, you can start off with a range of different places. There are, uh, there are convenience stores around the place, there's restaurants, um, takeaways, uh, which is quite easy to get a job. Um, there's also uh, services like Centric and um, I can't remember the name of the other one, but uh, they'll you can basically call on the morning and then book for book a shift for the day, which is quite convenient, especially if you're looking to um, work uh, not very regularly. Uh, you can you can just literally call in and say, "Can I? Is there a shift available for today?" And uh, mostly they'll they'll be happy to give you a shift and just build it around your studies yeah, or your tests. Exactly, like exactly. That. So you're not committed to um, to working only. Um, around Forest in, in general, I think uh, there is quite quite a few working opportunities as the Principality Stadium, which has got uh, a few good events uh, through the year. Um, you get chances to work there. You might be lucky enough to be able to see some concerts, uh, Anthony Joshua boxing. Brilliant. And be paid for the privilege <laughs> yeah, as well. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, there's you can definitely find time to work, uh, evenings and weekends for yourself. Um, yeah. Excellent, okay, great. Um, so we've got a, we've got a few more questions in uh, about uh, I suppose the the area as well accommodation. So we mentioned how um, Cardiff and Pontypridd and the South Wales area relative to London uh, what it has to offer. We understand that it's a very safe uh, and lovely environment to be studying and living in. Because it's safe doesn't necessarily mean it's boring either. Uh, we've got the nice kind of balance in between, which is great. So again, we've got lots of events. You're talking about the Principality Stadium over in Cardiff, the sporting events, the international music events, food festivals, yeah. everything else in between. Uh, some events directly relating to the university and a lot of events around the community as well that well, I suppose the majority of our students look to get involved with as well. Um, if we're talking about perhaps the uh, private uh, accommodation in Pontypridd, which is another question I think just popped into the feed there as well. So uh, private accommodation, again, uh, is, is, is safe. Um, what the university does is they work very closely with a large number of local private landlords in the area to make sure that all the accommodation is up to code, up to speed as well. And our own on-campus university accommodation team can help you uh, to find your private sector accommodation as well. Um, in terms of the cost, well, again, it was a little while ago when I was a student, when I was studying and living in private uh, accommodation. But I think the general cost now, and again, you might be able to tell me here, Vishnu, yeah. you're talking maybe 55 to 60 pounds a week or so yes. for your rent there. Uh, maybe a little bit more to include the bills. Yes. So at the moment, I'm paying about 70, between 70 and 75 quid. 
um, pounds, 75 pounds a week. So it's um, your rent and your utilities, yes, your bills. That's it. So it covers my rent and my utility bills. Uh, there was a place I was staying earlier, which was slightly cheaper, but um, but obviously I had to pay the bills separately, sure. which uh, which usually amounts around eight to ten pound a week, um, and in, maybe not including Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi costs another ten pound a month, so it's not it's not very expensive. Um, but yeah, that's that's the range you're looking at for private accommodation. Right. And um, if you've got a particular budget, like I think the student pad, that's that's a good place to start off. You can even filter prices. Uh, that's what I did when I searched for my for my accommodation. Yeah, it's got you got various different accommodations to kind of cater for everyone, really. Sure, sure, excellent. So, uh, were you sharing with many other students, or was it was it a small uh, uh, flat or house? Yeah, you get uh, usually it's about four to five students. Um, I wouldn't recommend that. I don't have m know of many houses that are more than five. Uh, so you're looking three to five students, and it's nice to have. Nice balance. Some friends as well, yeah. yeah, around in the house. Excellent. Okay, great. Um, so uh, Rosie Posey has just put a, a question in there. Um, are there any any Tesco's nearby? So we're talking about shopping. So we're talking about uh, obviously the food shop, your you, amenities, your utilities, and so on. So there's quite a few large supermarkets uh, in the area as well, Tesco's, Sainsbury's, Asda's, Lidl's, uh, Aldi's as well. Some real good student friendly. Uh, supermarkets as well. Uh, in terms of getting around to them, so we've got, we mentioned briefly the infrastructure for transport, so we've got a train line right through outside of our campus. Uh, every 10 or 12 minutes we've got the trains yes. going. Uh, we've got buses that the university put on as well to get you uh, from one of the locations to the other, uh, down to some of the supermarkets as well. Um, if you are in a great position of having somebody in your flat who has a car, um, then make friends with them. Uh, <laughs> really do because of course those uh, those weekly shops are so much more easier. Uh, do you, do you ever do the home deliveries? Uh, I used to. I don't do them anymore. Right. Um, but uh, it's just that a little lazy, <laughs> a little lazy now too, uh, because it does require a little bit of planning. That's right. Uh, that's right. I think. Um, I think that's about forty pound. You've got to order in one at one time to make it worth it. Uh, to make it worth it, then you pay about a pound or two pounds for delivery. Um, comes right to your doorstep, so it's very convenient that way. And the yes. deliveries go right from seven a.m. to like ten. 11 p.m. That's great. So that's, yeah. if, if you've got a few students, I suppose, in the same house or the same flats, exactly. um, bulking together to get your order in, split the cost of the delivery. That's it. Uh, and yeah, right to your door as well. So you don't have to worry about going to the edge of campus to collect it and walking it back to the accommodation. Yeah, but if you've right got little bits and pieces that you think you want to pick up on the way, Tesco's from the university campus is about 10 minutes max. Um, so if you go down Pont Preed, which is about another 15 minutes from the campus, um, you'll go into a little, there's um, Tesco's there, the Sainsbury's, so you've got, uh, and those are like big ones, not not the, the small express ones, so you'll find almost everything you'll need. Excellent, okay, great. Um, so we've got uh, a few more questions uh, in the pot here as well. So uh, one of the questions that we have, um, again, are there any cinemas, uh, or pubs around the area as well? So um, pretty much say five minute walk from where we are at the moment you would be yes. at the uh the kind of the entertainment uh park there so we've got the bowling we've got the cinemas we've got the restaurants nearby as well um but if you want to really bulk up that choice that you have then jumping on the train uh 20 minutes near to the capital city of cardiff itself I forget how many cinemas are there. I, I, <laughs> I would I hate to think how many restaurants were there as well. Just so many to choose from. Uh, so if you are a foodie, uh, again, we've already mentioned the International Food Festival. Yes. There's, there's a good three or four of them throughout the year there, taking up places around uh, the uh, South Wales area. You are spoiled for choice. There is, uh, there's too much for you to get through. Believe me, I know some people who have tried to get through it all, and they have <laughs> failed miserably, unfortunately. Not for sake of uh, not trying too hard, though. Um, excellent. Okay. So um, the next question, what are the facilities like at the University of South Wales? Um, so we, we've, we've spoken about some of the sport park facilities that we have here. Um, what are some of the other facilities you might have used around uh, campus? Uh, so obviously, uh, when I was living down in the Treforest campus in year one, and even now, um, I use the library services quite often um, because 
is you might know that you know you don't have nine to five lectures as you have in some countries on every day so you might spend a lot of time doing your own studies and uh, the library comes really handy it's open almost 24 hours through the term time uh, so the library facility and um, obviously if you're one of those who like to keep fit uh, then there's a sports center on campus as well uh, which has a good gym we've got uh, multiple multiple uh, sporting halls so you can play basketball badminton uh, rock climbing uh, things like that uh, there's yoga and squash many 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 different sports inside so so yeah in that th that way i just feel like it's quite complete brilliant excellent so we, we, we talk about facilities i think one of the large points uh around facilities also included is student services oh, yes, uh, that course. we have there as well so um studying support for for students uh there's one or two comments i think and questions there about uh health as well so on campus uh, we have we have our uh, own health clinic as well, uh, so you don't have to go all the way into town if you wanted to see a nurse or a GP. Uh, things like uh, getting your inoculations for international travel, things like that, can all be sorted uh, at the first step on campus. So we want to make sure that the whole journey, not just the arrival, not just your studies while you are here on campus, but I suppose a lifestyle, uh, the literal health of the student as well, are all cared for also. Yeah. Uh, and then we talk about that uh, study support at the same time. So uh, help with reference writing, uh, yeah. presentation work. Uh, is, is that something you have experienced of as well? Oh, yes, because um, before I came here, I had no clue what referencing was <laughs> <laughs> because it's not, it's not something that's uh, very well practiced in India, at least. Right. Um, so, so yeah, I don't want to get caught in one of those plagiarism things. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a dangerous game to be playing. <laughs> exactly. So I think the study skill service, the referencing, the library services, they came in very handy. Um, literally, like, spoon-fed me the way I should be referencing. Um, even things like you could get your assignments essays checked, uh, so you know they know that um, you know you know that they're of the right quality, the right standard, um, and you're kind of giving the best you can. Excellent. That's good. That's good. Um, so I've just seen we've got another question now. Um, there we are. Uh, Sujal uh, Shaha uh, asking: uh, Is there available cricket sport opportunities in this Trafores campus? So, uh, in terms, I suppose the societies, the sporting teams that students can be a part of as well. Uh, right at the beginning of the year, we have our Freshers Week, and of course, part of our Freshers Week, we have our Freshers Fair. That's yeah. where a lot of our uh, sporting societies, sporting teams, uh, recruit for their next teams for the intake there as well for tryouts and so on. Um, I have to admit, I'm not the most sporty and active person uh, in the world. Uh, I, I, I wish I had an excuse to spend a little bit more time down here at the facilities. Uh, maybe I'll have to sort myself out a little bit. But in terms of these societies, in terms of this, I suppose, range of activities to get involved, would you be able to just tell us a little bit more about those as well? Um, yes, first, let's answer the question. Yes, there is cricket. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> although we don't have a cricket field, uh, the team does train indoor in the um, Trafora Sports Center. Brilliant. So they can they play put on mats and uh, their nets for batting and bowling. Um, but yeah, apart from that, there are like, I don't know, I can't even count how many sports we're a part of. Uh, it's definitely football, rugby, um, badminton, volleyball, tennis, <laughs> swimming. Uh, yeah, there are quite a few. And uh, you can, so you can enroll. All you need to do is literally sign a piece of paper with your name on there on a fresher sphere and then they'll contact you Brilliant. Um, they'll let you know when to come for tryouts and, uh, and they're quite straightforward um, for for some people like me uh, no there is not much politics it's, <laughs> it's fairly straightforward to get into these teams and if you're good enough you so like for example with football we've got six teams uh, so irrespective of uh, what your um, playing standard is you you'll get an opportunity I think um, yeah, I think that's that's good to highlight. You yes. Know? Um, I say I I I I came to university. Uh, wanted to try and get involved where I could. Understood that perhaps sports and societies, uh, the active activities there weren't necessarily my bag, so to speak. But I still had the opportunity to try things like archery, um, rock climbing, bouldering as well. Having had no experience of it beforehand, uh, which was great. You know, uh, it was just nice to kind of try it out as well. Yeah, yes. definitely. 
Excellent. So just on the back of that one as well. Um, so uh, from Honza Ni, uh, what societies are based on the Atrium campus? Excellent. So those of you who aren't aware, our Atrium campus is, I suppose, our creative industries hub. That's where all of our courses to do with uh, media, journalism, photography, drama, music, dance, all of these things that could be considered the, the arts, the physical arts, the performing arts, the traditional and digital arts are all based at Atrium campus. And a lot of our societies are reflected there as well. Now, a number of these societies do transition across from Treforest. Treforest is kind of our larger campus, so we do have a large student population hub there. But we do also have some of the activities over at the Atrium. We have societies like uh, the Gaming Society. We have our Film Society. We have our Anime Society. Um, one point to raise, I suppose, is if you find after Freshers Week that there is not a society that you have an interest in or there was something you were hoping to find that isn't there, well, you have the opportunity to establish it yourself. If you and a small number of friends were to get together and wanted to officially start a society together, then that's absolutely fine. You can uh, register with the Students' Union. You can even put in for additional support and funding for activities or for equipment and things like that as well and just meet like-minded people who like to get involved with those kind of activities as well. Absolutely, and not just uh, not just sporting societies or creative societies, you can even have like a community. So there's like Malaysian societies, Indian societies. So, um, so you, might meet, uh, you might meet a lot of friends. You will make friends with people you know and same country, same background, same culture. So, uh, so it's not a place where you feel excluded. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's really key, I think. Excellent, okay, great. So let's just check the next question. So what are the career prospects for USW graduates? Okay, uh, an incredibly important question to be asking. Of course, um, the majority of people who want to go to university traditionally do so to boost their employability. You want to make sure that there is that opportunity when you graduate. So if we start perhaps at the top, um, roughly speaking, 95% of uh, USW graduates are within uh, either further education or employment within six months of graduating. However, some areas are higher than the 95%. I think sport is a little yeah. bit higher than that as well. Um, but if it's all about the, the prospects of employability, a lot of it does also come down to what opportunities you take up while you are here. So we talk about part-time work, uh, boosting employability, uh, placements and things like that. Yeah, um, yeah, like you said, that it's about uh, what you take up while you're at university. I think the university is uh, very well connected within the industry, so you'll have a lot of placement opportunities, um, you'll have internship opportunities that you will get mostly through um, through your course leaders, through your module leaders, uh, also the careers and advice team, I believe. Um, there are quite a few employability fairs as well that happen across across the year. So whether it's part-time job, voluntary experience, or even sometimes paid work, you'll be able to find most of them at, at these fairs. Uh, and that really helps boost your uh, career prospects. Um, and I've, I've certainly gained a lot of, uh, of part-time work, at least, uh, from, from these fairs. And uh, those part-time works definitely kind of uh, boost your CV. Um, to eventually land the role you want to do after after you graduate brilliant and lots lots of little different skills you pick up uh, along the way excellent that's it every every little thing along the side adds into the bigger picture of course what's going to happen in your future uh so we have a question from uh farman uh, muller uh, so does the university have technical exhibitions? Uh, so I'm a little bit unsure on where the question's going here. Perhaps you can clarify for me. But if we're talking about uh, exhibitions as in the work that our students produce and showcase, then as a, as a great example, we can talk about the atrium again, our creative industries. So at the end of each year, uh, we have what we call a graduate showcase where our students who have been working on their final major projects, they spent a good you know, eight, nine, 12 months or so working on this oh, final sure. piece, they get to showcase it to the rest of the faculty, the rest of the university, and then open to the public as well, uh, which is great. It gives them that exposure. We talk about employability, Absolutely. that exposure of, well, this is what it would be like in the real world. You're working on something, a project or a piece, and now you get to show it to everybody and manage and gauge that reaction as well. 
if the question was more so perhaps uh, about uh, exhibitions in the university showcasing its provisions, then yes, we, we, we uh, conduct exhibitions throughout the world through a range of different regions as well um, with uh, a number of partners, in-country partners, uh, where we, again, are there in country for you to ask those questions that you have, to have a little conversation with us, to get a little bit more of a feel about what the university has to offer. If you want a little bit more information about those kind of things, and feel free to drop us an email, and we can let you know the next time we'll be looking to visit uh, somewhere local to yourselves as well. Excellent, great. Let's have a little look at the next question. So, uh, how can I apply to study with the University of South Wales? Uh, how did you go about making your application? Um, so the first time I applied through an agent um, from India itself, um, it was quite straightforward for the first time because all I needed was my personal statement, uh, my CV, um, and a few other documents, I think, like your whatever qualifications, uh, academic qualifications, um, and they did the rest for me. Uh, but yeah, when I applied for my master's, I did it directly, and I, and I felt that was quite straightforward as well. Um, all I needed to do was put all put my personal statement, my CV, all of them in there, and I was lucky. It's good because when you apply for your master's after finishing your bachelor's, they've got all your qualifications. It's just updating that yes, application. that's it. So, uh, so it was very straightforward. But I believe there are um, other ways like UCAS as well. You can apply through, um, and now I think the university is a better network of agents as well. Um, I know for a fact that in India there's a, a country country manager, I believe. That's, that's, correct. that's yeah. correct. So uh, so all you need to do is drop them an email and they'll be able to sort you out. That's it, yeah. We want to make sure that the whole application process for you as, uh, as new to it as you might be, or well, that you have all the support that you need. If you're confident in your abilities and you can make a direct application to the university, and we will support you from that end. Alternative, as Vishnu said, we have income through representatives, we have agency partners, or you can go through UCAS, a lot of different options for you. And if there are any questions you have about the application process along the way, then we are here to help you with any of those little sticking points as well. Excellent. Uh, so we had a, another question there uh, from uh, Sammy M. Um, how does the uni handle bullying? Okay, so this is kind of coming back to the, the safe environment that we were talking about. So uh, not necessarily just the, uh, the region of South Wales and the area being a nice, safe and welcoming environment, but the university also likes to mirror that quite well as well. So in terms of making sure that all of our students are happy, that uh, they're getting on with uh, their peers, that there's nothing stopping you from achieving your uh, high grades with your studies and so on, then we have quite a few different uh, systems in place to support you. Uh, a couple of times per year, students have the opportunity to meet with their personal tutors. Now their personal tutors might be somebody who, who teaches them on the course, on the degree, there might be somebody actually just associated with the faculty but doesn't actually teach them. But nevertheless, these people, are these tutors, are there for you to basically highlight any concerns or worries that you have. Be that financial, uh, academic, uh, social, medical. If you just want to go and rant to somebody to get something off your chest, then there's quite a few people that we can uh, obviously be using to, to support that. We have our dedicated student services team. We have our disabilities and dyslexia support systems as well. Uh, we have we have the meeting house. I'm not sure if you've ever been to the meeting house on yes, campus. Yes, I have. I have. Um, that's a good place to relax. Actually, um, if you just want some alone time, you it's not you don't have to pay for it. It's free. So, uh, just a brilliant place. Go have some coffee. Uh, you can speak to a couple of people. Just tell them what you feel like. Um, and yeah, um, this, this I've never actually felt uh, any sort of bullying, um, no sort of racism over uh, over my four four and a half years here. Um, so I haven't had the need to contact anyone, um, but I know that there's definitely support available if, if need be. Excellent. That's good to know. It's, that's really good. Um, so we have, we have another question now, uh, and we have, uh, how experienced uh, are the tutors? How experienced are the tutors? So um, again, perhaps additional in, in your own experience of their experience, so <laughs> to speak, uh, I know that we have a lot of uh, students who, who come back from industry, uh, yeah. who are actively doing research projects along teaching. How how is that reflected in the teaching that you have received? Uh, in within my uh, within sport, at least, I can definitely say they're very experienced. 
So a lot of them, say if you're talking about coaching, they're coaching at uh, Welsh Prem Standards. Uh, they're uh, come back from coaching national squads like England, like our first team coach here. And um, he also does some teaching um, delivery on football coaching modules. He's been with the, uh, um, the England national women's team. Brilliant. So he's been wow. with them, uh, currently working with Barry. They're now qualified for Europe. So the head coach, Gav, Gavin Chesterfield, he's, uh, he's one of our tutors. Um, and yeah, so I think the university in that sense is given them time to work in the industry. So all the information that they give us is very relevant and current. Um, you don't feel like it's kind of outdated or, uh, or, uh, or is how is it applicable in, in the real life scenario? Like you study some concept and they'll be very, very capable to exp explain to you how it works out in the industry. Brilliant. Hey, yeah. so, so you're making that connection from uh, from your studies into industry a little bit smoother. Yeah. Uh, less daunting, perhaps, when you actually go to find that job for yeah. yourself. And, and not just that. I feel that, you know, having them actively work in the environment or in the industry, um, it also, um, it's like a resource for you to, to tap into. You could um, ask them for placement opportunities. You could ask them for internships so where you can look for your next job or, or if you've got something that you're concerned about, you can even speak to them about that or or how how really your studies apply in the industry. Brilliant. Excellent. That's good. It's very important. Um, speaking of important, uh, probably one of the most important questions that we've had, again from Rosie here, are there any Starbucks <laughs> on the campus? Definitely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, they are. Uh, Year-round accessible Starbucks to help you burn through those studies, those exams, those assessments, and so on, uh, especially late into the night where you might have left one of those deadlines a little bit late and you find yourself on campus again a little bit later than usual. You want to make sure you have the caffeine to keep you going when you need it the most. <laughs> Excellent. Um, we also have there, so um, <clears throat> a question about the uh, prices for clothing, for food, and things like that. So. We, we talk about the area of South Wales uh, being relatively affordable. Again, perhaps if we wanted to compare that to London, not just speaking on London today, but again, a lot more affordable. We talk about accommodation, we talk about transport and entertainment. But again, when we come down to food, when we come down to clothing, those costs are significantly more affordable as well. Um, there are a few deals perhaps. Yeah, for just to mention that like, there's always student discounts on everything you want to buy. Shoes, you want to buy clothes, there's always student discounts. So, uh, so yeah, you get a better rate than everyone else um, on food and things like that. If you buy larger quantities, especially if you plan well, um, they're very affordable. Excellent. Very, very affordable. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, so we have another question here as well uh, so from Barter Fuel. Will we be able to rewatch this stream later? So will it be uplo uploaded to somewhere? Yes, if you wanted to uh, pick back through the session that we're doing today, uh, it'll be uploaded. You'll be able to use uh, the same link that you have used to access here as well to get back onto the whole stream. If, however, you have further questions, because of course it won't be live, that you want to have answered, then do feel free to email them through to us or direct message them on Instagram or uh, basically any of our social media channels. I'll be happy to uh, get through to you with those answers. Okay. Um, another question. Uh, I love food questions. So how <laughs> is the cafeteria facilities on campus? Uh, are the vegetarian, vegan, and halal options available? Excellent. So uh, very important to have uh, a diverse choice of food, if you ask me. Again, we're talking about the International <laughs> Food Festivals. It keeps coming around to food. Um, yes, if we are talking about having access to vegan food, uh, vegetarian food, halal food, uh, low calorie options, uh, gluten-free foods, yeah. you know, the choices are there. Um, basically, all of our staff at our catering outlets are, are very friendly and approachable as well. So if you have a specific needs and requirements that you are not seeing when you're just actually at the desks there, then feel free to get in touch with them as well. But traditionally, I think I think every day there's at least a vegetarian, if not vegan option over at uh, the Stilts Cafe, uh, halal food as well. And again, the light bites and the, uh, the low calorie options too. Uh, and then again, that's not just a Trafoy, but that's across our campuses as well. So, you know, spoil for choice uh, when it comes down to the food. <laughs> Excellent. So the next question, uh, how many teaching hours do students have each week? 
Uh, I suppose this one's a little bit broad. Limited, yeah. It depends on the course you're studying. It depends on the kind of module, the class that you have. Uh, again, in your own experiences in Vishnu. Oh, it's hard to calculate, <laughs> but um, but it my number of like in class teaching hours uh, they reduced as I went from year one to three, uh, one to two to three, and then now my masters. Um, what it is like is what they ex uh, expect you to do is work in the industry. So you've got a lot of um, so in year two, I had a placement opportunity in my year three, I did an applied professional project. So the whole module was centered about me delivering a project in the industry. Um, so that is brilliant because that's applied learning. You get your name out there as well. So you can make contacts, you build your network. Uh, so that way, um, and I think a lot of students in my experience as well have confused teaching hours with how much you should put in your learning. <laughs> uh, nice. but. But we've got so much support available and um, and the library for us to go and do background research, uh, read a little bit more about the topic, um, go through some relatively recent articles and journal papers. So, so yeah, all the teaching weeks and hours might differ from course to course. I think it's a full-time course, so just like a full-time job, you're supposed to do it nine to five, <laughs> five days a week. Excellent. So perhaps on, on the, the back of that answer as well, uh, we have uh, Michelle asking, well, how many people are in a class? Uh, so again, a kind of broad question, depending on the, the subjects and the modules, but again, in your own experiences. Um, so in my experience, it was ranging between 20 to 30. Uh, there are some modules, obviously, um, like research skills. Um, those are quite, quite large numbers. It could go about 100 sometimes. It's like a big lecture theater. Um, it's good because uh, those kind of modules are not specific to your course. So they could be, for us, it was all of sport. Um, so it, gave us, it gives you an opportunity to know different people, like see the way they research. And uh, because when you're in one field, you might quite be narrow-minded about the way you look for stuff. Um, but, but yeah, having an opportunity to do modules with loads of different people gives you that different perspective and how other people study maybe. Um, some modules are like, for example, we had some football coaching modules that we needed 30 players. Sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can't, you can't do it without them. So sometimes you're like two cohorts are mixed. Right. Um, yeah, but by and large, I say about 20 to 30. And I think the university in general is trying to keep that number small. So you can have a lot of, um, I believe attention and, uh, cater to your specific needs. Uh, rather than getting lost in in hundreds. Yeah, that's it. A little bit more of a personal experience. Of course, yes. Okay, that's great. And um, so, just just to highlight, anybody who's recently joined us in the stream here, uh, my name's Tom. Hi, I'm part of the international office of the University of South Wales, and joined by Vishnu here, Hello. current students, uh, master's degree, and also an undergraduate students um, from. We graduated last year, wasn't it? Yes, graduated last year, uh, and we are answering basically questions you have about student life. Any interesting points you want answers to? Just trying our best, really, to give you the uh, the best impression and the full impression of what it would be like to study at the University of South Wales. Okay, um, excellent. So uh, we have a few questions here as well. Uh, what is a uh, what is the walking from accommodation to the campus. Oh, right, there we are. Do we have to use trains? Right, so you do not have to use trains. You can walk if you wish. Uh, if we're talking about getting uh, getting around campus, traditionally your accommodation is either right on the campus or next door to the campus that you're studying at. As an example, Treforest, our accommodation is right on campus. If we talk about Newport or our Atrium campus, and the accommodation is just literally down the road from there as well. However, if you wanted to get around the rest of the area, go from one campus to the other, then we do have the train systems, again, every 10 or 12 minutes or so. Um, there's there's a student discount as well, I, I believe. Yes, yes, there is. I think it's about 30% off. 30%. Yeah, yeah on, on student rail cards, and uh, that's quite... It's quite a good deal. It all adds up. Um, yes, absolutely. <laughs> but just to pick up on that, and um, you know, in my in my um, CAS letter or conditional offer, it said Pontypridd campus. I was a little confused. Oh, what is Pontypridd campus and what is Treforest campus? Um, so Pontypridd campus is Treforest and Glintaf. 
um, and I think the sports park as well comes That's right. is a yeah. part of uh, like to include you in the group. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, is is a part of the Pontypridd campus and the shuttle shuttle bus service from Trafalgar campus to Glintaff and back, and same goes to the sports park to sports park and back. So it's quite convenient and it's free for all students. It's I think the Glintaff one is every fifteen minutes. That's right. Um, sport park one is every hour. Uh, so it's, it's so you almost don't have to spend on trains. Uh, if you're if you're gonna go f- study around around different campuses, uh, but yeah, going to Cardiff and stuff like that, the train you got to use the trains. It's very close as well. That's it. It's about five minute walk from. Well, yeah, train. depending on how, how active you are or want to be, perhaps when you come to uh, university, perhaps a, a life revelation if you wanted to step into that fitness routine. Um, cycling around between some of the more local sites is incredibly accessible and easy. You know, if you wanted to cycle from Trafalgar down to the Swatch Park here, I guess. 20 minutes 15, 15 20, 20 minutes 20 yeah minutes. yeah not long at all we got the cycle paths uh the taft trail if you wanted to go all the way could take you into Beautiful. cardiff uh if you have a lovely day for a nice cycle there that's great actually if you jump onto our youtube channel you'll see one of our student bloggers uh jaya way uh filmed the whole journey down there on a bike if you wanted wow. to uh, have a little bit of a look um but yeah getting around whether that's walking whether that's bus whether that's uh train uh, or cycling there there are a number of options and again relatively low cost uh, as well, obviously, making sure that we're making that money that we have got a little bit further as well. Excellent. Um, so we have a question there from uh, Zoe K. Uh, while you were studying there, did you meet anyone studying the chiropractic course? Uh, if so, what were the general comments about the course? Um, um, I have actually. You have excellent. Yeah, uh, a few like through the through through my time at um, at USW, and I think from from general feedback. It seems to be one of the best in the country, and uh, they're also very closely linked to the Welsh chiropractic. Well, since of chiropractic, oh, yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. it. Um, that's it. So, sorry, <laughs> um, but yeah, and and then and it's quite. It is quite a hard course uh, to do. It's, it's one of the harder ones, from what I understand. So this is not my experience of studying it. Uh, my my course that I studied was international wildlife biology, so a little little bit different from chiropractic studies uh, and in sport, of course. Um, but I, when I was studying, I, I lived with a couple of uh, chaps from Ireland who were studying uh, chiropractic. Uh, one of them is actually my chiropractor now, uh, oh, which wow. is really, really yeah. good. It's really convenient. Um, but yeah, it is perhaps one of the more demanding courses uh, the University of South Wales has to offer. Um, from what I understand, we have a, a four-year program. Uh, where the first three years are undergraduate, the final one is a master, so you graduate with a master's in one go. But you have, uh, I suppose, your clinical placements in your final year. So yes. the Welsh Institute of Chiropractic, which is an active treating facility on campus that students and staff can go and use for chiropractic treatment at a discount as well, yeah. which is great. <laughs> Uh, as well as treating the public. Well, if you are a chiropractic student, you are actively working on living live patients, yes. Uh, yes. so to speak. Um, so, of course, keeping those industry standards and that employability really high. I, I recently spoke with a group of chiropractic students who are looking to graduate this year. Uh, when I spoke to them back in uh, April, uh, a large chunk of the cohort had already secured jobs before yes, graduating. Yes, yes. I have some close friends who have uh, done the same all around the country as well. Manchester, Liverpool. Big demand for yes, chiropractors. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> They're quite effective as well, mind. That's right. Uh, that's I've right. been to a few chiropractic sessions, and uh, and although you might think they're students, <laughs> extremely well, uh, very well capable of uh, treating anything you've got. <laughs> that's brilliant. Excellent. Okay. So, um, next question. Uh, how are students assessed? Ah, right. So, assessment techniques, assessment styles examinations and so on oh, what, what kind of uh, what kind of assessments do you have then um, we i had uh, various different uh, types of assessment and i believe chiropractic is the same and um, even aircraft maintenance engineering uh, like you've got viva watches you've got presentations you've got written exams uh, practical tests um so so that's that's um, it's a various range of different um, uh, different assessment techniques uh, it's quite nice because you know not everyone's strong with everything. <laughs> like I couldn't memorize anything, so I'm really bad on tests. But uh, so so having a presentation, uh, I've got pointers on the slides. That's that's a good way of. Yes, uh, yes. Um, also, I've got lots of essays, report writings, um, where you kind of 
it's, it's, I think it's a better way of showcasing your knowledge because you've got to do the background research to write an, a good paper. True. Um, and and it's not like it's not like a memorizing test. So although you know there are some courses that need to have um, have exams, not um, that's not the only way of assessment. Excellent. Okay, great. Yeah. So it's it's nice to have that diversity that uh, that are appeals to I suppose a range of students and yes. industry types. As of well. course, yes. And everyone's got their preferences. I, I think I'm in the same uh, boat as yourself. I, I could not handle examinations. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, things like mental reports. Uh, so you go out, do your placement, um, or do like a professional project, and you get assessed off the back of uh, what you've uh, what you've achieved as like. Um, so you could say, for example, if since we are on YouTube, if I'm running a YouTube channel uh, for some creative student, uh, it would be the number of likes, the how you've built it across the years. Um, what have you done? So that could be a tangible way of showing that you've done a good job. It could be if you have a mentor, the report, the feedback you get from them, even that's a type of assessment. So uh, so it's quite nice. Uh, I like the diversity, the different range of assessments. It's important. It's good. It gives you a range more, uh, yeah. a greater range of skills there as well. Excellent. Uh, so we've had a few questions, I think, now uh, about um, perhaps bringing families over uh, or whether our families can visit us on campus while we are studying. So if we if we briefly reflect back on the accommodation options that we have, uh, first of all, the accommodation, as an example, at Traforest campus has studio apartments uh, designed for small families uh, or uh, for, again, uh, families to, uh, to 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 be living in with the students as well. Uh, a limited number of these, and they do prioritize to the students who have perhaps uh, children to take care of as well. But if we are talking about uh, just having the family come over to visit, um, they're of course welcome to uh, welcome onto campus to visit you as well. Uh, the accommodation services traditionally ask you just to make them aware. We sign in the guests that we have on campus for security reasons, and then sign them out uh, as they leave. But there, there's traditionally no issues with having your family come over and saying hi, cashing up. If anything, we would like to encourage, uh, of course, your family to come see you. Uh, it puts them at ease, make sure that uh, they're aware that you are enjoying your time studying with us as well. Uh, and of course, it's a little bit different in the private sector, but I imagine there are, there are fewer restrictions, if at all, any yes. with having your family come over. Has, has a family come over to, to visit at all, Vishnu? Funny enough, uh, my my parents were here for the last month and uh, they just flew out this morning. Ah, oh, right, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> yeah, so uh, so yeah, I've, uh, I've been lucky enough that my house, uh, so obviously I'm living in a private accommodation and uh, some of my flatmates have gone back home. I didn't inform the landlord and my friends were happy for me to use their room, uh, so so it's quite convenient that way. Uh, as long as you know your accommodation is um, can can hold host or hold uh, hold your parents. <laughs> you, uh, as long as you've got the space. Yeah, as long yeah. as you've got the space, that's it. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward. Excellent. Just come on a tourist visa, I guess. Brilliant. Oh, you mentioned that uh, they flew out this morning. Uh, where did they fly uh, into or fly out from? Uh, Cardiff, luckily, uh, <laughs> because the first three years of my university, um, I used to go to London, right. which I thought it was a bit of a travel. Um, although, you know, you might put on Google Maps and says three and a half hours, but if you're going to use public transport, bus, or train, it is a little bit longer. Um, and sometimes, uh, at least um, a couple of years ago, it was like you had to get into the center of London and then go out to Heathrow. Uh, sure. Uh, but now the direct services to Heathrow takes about three and a half, four hours, which is which is great. Uh, but Cardiff Airport's now so Qatar Airways is now flying in uh, at Cardiff Airport. That's very handy, very handy. So it's, um, take the taxi or get the bus about That's an it. hour uh, yeah. on the bus and about thirty minutes on the Twi half hour. 25, 30 25, minutes. 30 That's 30 right. Minutes. That's right. Uh, if you get a cab uh, yeah. to the airport, it's very, very convenient. So uh, quite a small airport as well, so not too much waiting time. Not too much time. waiting, which no. is always a bonus. Yeah, Absolutely. So, yeah, of course, Qatar, there are some big connections around the world to go on through. Uh, I uh, I tend to work around Southeast Asia uh, for the so, university there, so I'll fly Qatar to Doha, Doha to Kuala Lumpur there, uh, in two you know, seven-hour kind of stints, as it is. Um, a good point to raise, I suppose, as well, if it is the first time you'll be joining us in September, we have our International Welcome Week program, uh, obviously, to help students get um, sort of comfortable uh, at life at the University of South Wales. However, if you are a 
arriving at Cardiff Airport, then what we can do, we can send a taxi free of charge to go and collect you and bring you on over to campus, literally picking you up from arrivals and dropping you off at your accommodation front door, just again to try and take that pressure and stress away from that first journey you'll be making. Okay, so uh, if you were to sign up for the, one of those with the Welcome Week program, then of course we can get you here onto campus as well. Uh, there are a few other support packages we have around London. If you wanted to fly into London and use the shuttle service across uh, to campus that way. Um, but yes, if there's any support you need with the transport and things like that, then feel free to get in touch with us. Um, right, I'm just getting aware of the time here, so we're just starting to roll on through some of these final questions as well. So we've got five minutes to go. Um, we have a question here, perhaps around the application process, uh, which is, uh, what advice do you have for writing a personal statement? Okay, so of course, uh, when making an application, you need to provide your qualifications, your employment history, and so on. But alongside that, we provide a personal statement. And the personal statement is there to highlight, well, your skills, uh, your aims, your goals, all of those things that you don't have a certificate for, but are important. They make you who you are and they build towards your aspirations. So in terms of perhaps writing a personal statement, what advice would you have for a student there, Vishnu? Uh, I'm trying to think, uh, reflecting on what I wrote when, when I first joined university, um, I had this temptation to pick up uh, something from the internet, maybe I just words like, I'm a sincere person, I'm, I'm hardworking and things like that. But uh, but then I just felt like that won't cut it. And uh, since I've come to university, I feel a lot stronger about it. Um, I think a personal statement firstly has to be personal, True. has to be about what have you done? Um, why do you feel strongly that you're going to be successful or want to do this course? Um, I came from a technology background, so science, technology, and then it's like it's a big jump to come into sports. So I want to tell them where where my passions, uh, passion for sport came from and uh, what, what are the some what are the things I enjoyed? What have I done um, that was in line with uh, with what I want to study here? So, so yeah, I think if you cover those bits, and I think the university will find value in your application. I think the university likes to pick well-rounded individuals um, who've not just not only academic qualifications, but have done other things um, and have different experiences. Excellent. That's it. Yeah, I, I think that echoes into employability as well. Absolutely. Uh, so not just before coming to university, but during your time studying and whatever you do after you graduate as well, because the journey doesn't end. You don't stop learning once you graduate. Uh, one of the key principles of coming to university is that you learn how to effectively learn. Okay, we keep the journey going and going. That's what we want to see from all of our students and our graduates. And of course, that builds into the employability side. So the more that you are doing, the more involved you are, that wider understanding that you have, that diversity as well, really does fold into that uh, boost of your future prospects. Excellent. Okay, so we have uh, one final question, which actually um, fits in pretty well here. Uh, and that is, how do I get in touch if I have any more questions? Uh, any more questions to ask after this session? So uh, as we briefly mentioned, this session will be online afterwards for you guys to review uh, if you want to go through any of the information we provided already. If you have further questions, then you can feel free to uh, email us back on the email invitation uh, contact details that were provided earlier on, or alternatively through uh, international at southwales.ac.uk. Uh, if you jump onto the website, we've got our direct phone numbers, we've got our social media feeds there as well. Uh, we have our student bloggers, our student vlogger projects also. I think I saw somebody asking about being a vlogger on campus also. Um, if you arrive here in September and you are still interested in being a vlogger, then come on down to the digital team, have a little chat and let's see what we can do there. We tend to recruit five or six students every year to vlog for the university. Um, but yeah, we want to see everybody as involved as possible. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I'm really hoping that it was of benefit and help to everybody here today. I'm very sorry that we didn't have the time to answer everybody's questions, uh, but that engagement is really great to see. Um, like I said, anything else that we can do for you between now and arriving at the University of South Wales, then feel free to ask. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. All the very best for your application. <laughs> Goodbye.